Sellis. I'm Alan Sellis, the founder of Tech Adventures. Uh, Tech Adventures was created two years ago to bring skills in computer programming, robotics, engineering to kids across Dallas. We teach kids to do absolutely amazing things like JavaScript or HTML or Python. Oh, did I mention we start doing that in fourth grade? That's what we do. So the reason we do this is something that our schools and all the educational systems that we really would love to rely on uh, have kind of gifted us with. Unfortunately, we're just not teaching these skills. Some of the most valuable ones that you can give to kids and the impact on us socially and economically is pretty grave. These are the most valuable skills that we have cr are creating as a society. This should be learned like reading and writing, and we're saving it till high school because we're crazy. And not because we're crazy, we're saving it because we haven't figured out how to do it yet. Well, if you're a parent and you think this is a problem, then we have a solution for you. And the kind of solution that we're providing to some very intent and happy parents around the Dallas-Fort Worth area are after-school programs, summer camps, and increasingly work that we do with schools one after one as they invite us in. We do our work in person, not online, because that fits the profile of the learners that we most want to get into the realm of technical skills. We work with kids from kindergarten through eighth grade. We've even been pulled into doing engineering program for preschool like this. This is one of our first preschool robotics programs. We refuse to go younger than four years old. So that's what we'd be doing. The response has been really amazing as a, as a business. And this is going to be, a, uh, there are two announcements I want to make today. First, we're averaging like 340% growth year over year if you average out our different quarters. Um, we're profitable as a month or two ago. And if you, if you take, it's, it's just, just good, good, sweet stuff. And somebody in this room was actually our very first paying customer. You figure out who it is, I'll buy you a beer, all right? So if, <laughs> you got it, man. Um, so if that's what's going on quarter over quarter, imagine you were to take like our revenues and just look at them trailing 12 months back. So that number's growing like 40%. Again, as we trail forward, we're, we're trending towards, we, we may, we, there was $100,000 of sales last year, it's going to probably approach 300 by the end of this year. So if you take that kind of trend line and, and just cut a third off of it, then Dallas breaks through $2 million of this economic activity. And by the way, someone asked me, one of our investors asked me today, so how big could Dallas be? If you look at the numbers, $150 for every child in the United States is spent on tutoring, supplemental learning, and things like that. So I think Dallas could be a $72 million market. We're not going to get quite that, that ballsy, but, uh, but that's the first step. That's what we look like in Dallas. That's not the objective. The objective is to look like this. If we look like this and take sort of the secret sauce for how we, have, how we teach this to kids, share it out with others, license it, and franchise it, we think that we approach $50 million of revenues over about six years. So to get there, we're starting a fundraising round. Fundraising round will close soon. And as our friends at Tech Wildcatters tell us, we're raising about three quarters of a million dollars. Um, Robert and Gabriella tell us we're about 50, 60 shy of that. So we will be funded pretty soon and ready to roll this out. It's just been crazy, it's been great stuff. I won't bore you with team. We do have competitive advantage compared to others. But the most important thing that I want to leave you with before the gong, there is a disruptive moment waiting to happen. There's something that kids need to make their impact on the world. We've figured out how to teach it. And we have created the place where young inventors come to play. That's the takeaway. So send me your questions. <laughs> or whoever holds the microphone, send him your questions. 
So as, as someone uh, doing boot camp work with, on the adult side, I'm curious, uh, and we haven't talked much about this, but what does, uh, is there a licensing aspect? What does that look like for you since you're running your own camps? I know on the adult side, we're licensed with the state, and so what does that look like? How does that cost affect your business? Really? You are licensed with the state. Awesome. Yeah, we are licensed there. with the Texas Workforce Commission, yeah. Cool, I don't know cool, how that cool. works on the kids' side. Though. Yeah, good, good to hear. So, yeah, from, from our side, um, tutoring businesses usually don't have the same kind of licensing requirements as child care centers. We work very hard to make sure we're not a child care center or providing that. Um, if we're working with children and providing uh, access to a specialized skill, that also doesn't make us a camp. Obviously, as we start branching out and working nationally, you know, making sure we have the staff to do that kind of compliance um, will be essential. But we figure if Kuman does it in like 1,300 locations across the U.S., then we'll, we'll, we'll pull it off as well. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I gather this is a subscriber-based uh, business. So what is your uh, renewal rate for your first-time users? Yeah, and thanks for the question. So let me, um, the, the way that we have been working so far is kind of like, you know, like a course model. You pay as you go for each individual course. A course could run from $200 to $450 for something um, that's an intensive program over the summer. Um, still filtering what our renewal rate is, so I can tell you that of, of campers that came through a program over the summer, 23% um, of them came from existing clients and a, you know, a huge mass of them uh, coming back in. So it's a nice, it's a nice return rate and you know, we, we could talk at another point just from the business side what the spend per family is you know, across the lifetime um, of their engagement with us. It's about $600 so far. So it's been, it's been, pretty, uh, it's been pretty robust. Hey Alan, I'm an educator in Dallas ISD and I want to have a question about how are you making sure that your services are available to the, to the communities and the kids that need it the most, which I think are the, the kids who are most underrepresented in technology and engineering fields like Hispanic kids and black kids from low-income communities. How can, how can you make sure that your product and your services are being available and to those kids? Yeah, no, totally, well. totally, totally. And this is, you know, I, I come, my background is two decades in education, including, you know, running schools and doing stuff like that. One of our favorite clients last year, um, if you look at it, was Uplift Education. Um, they brought us in, got a phone call from them, and they said, hey, I'm, um, you know, hi there, my name is Yasmin Bhatia. I'm the CEO of Uplift Education. We only work in high need areas where kids are, you know, at or below five different poverty tests. What can you do for 425 kids a week? And we worked that out. So we, we have had delightful, delightful conversations. We put people across the ground in South Dallas Heights neighborhood, two locations, DeSoto, we went down there. We did amazing, amazing stuff. Um, one of the things that I would love to find for us, I'll make an offer, I take this back to DISD, we would love to plan a model classroom inside every single school district. If you think you don't have the resources to grab a full-time teacher, bring us in, we will do it for half the cost of what a school district can. But we think there's a great partnership to be made between foundations and tech adventures. Like, let the foundations gather the resources together and then rather than build an expensive apparatus to go teach the stuff, like hire the teachers, send us there, and we, we found amazing people to do it. So I'm, I would love to push that conversation forward, but it's, it's been a part of us since we started. Hey, Alan. We're here. Hey. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. Um, hey, great job on your pitch. It's really come a long way, and I know you've worked really hard to get there, the business as well. So Thank you. I wiped a lot of tomatoes off there. <laughs> no. Um, so I think for most, I mean, I'm fortunate to have known you throughout this process and seen you grow, but for someone who's here tonight who maybe doesn't, you know, this is the first time they've heard of you, what, what do you think they can do for you as by sitting, you know, they're sitting in the audience right now? Absolutely. There are two kinds of people. Um, our funding is taken care of. I don't need any funding for another 18 months. So we're, go away. If you're a funder, sorry, you too. Um, two kinds of people I'd like to meet. Um, people who are interested in teaching Python, to, to fifth graders, interested in meeting those kinds of people, because we're, we're just going to keep recruiting and training people. Want to teach Python to fifth graders and you can pass a criminal background check? I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> love to talk to you. The second, the second is I would really love to see a relationship with someone at the superintendent level in the school districts, because we could really do stuff for you. So bring it on and we'll do it. 
Well done. That was great.